We're going to test the battery and the charging system now. And the beauty of this test is you can do a number of different tests with one single connection. So we're going to take the black lead and hook up to the negative post of the battery. We'll take the red lead, hook up to the positive post of the battery. We'll select DC volts on the meter and we're going to go ahead and activate min max. Now you can see that the surface charge of the battery is 12.5 volts or more, which indicates that we have sufficient charge on the battery to continue the test. Now before I started this, I turned on the headlights for a few minutes. That way it bled off any surface charge when I drove the vehicle into the stall. Now what we're going to do is crank the engine. By simply pushing the min-max button one time, we can read the maximum voltage. That's the voltage once the alternator started generating some voltage to recharge the battery. You can see here we're at 13.84 volts. That's good. The alternator's doing what it's supposed to do. Now what about the minimum battery voltage? What did it drop to? Well, we can do it simply by pushing the button one more time. You can see that we dropped down to 10.28 volts. That's pretty good. If it went below 9.6 volts, I'd probably have to charge the battery again and then retest it and maybe even replace the battery if I couldn't bring it up. While I'm connected to the battery, I can test the alternator diodes. It's real easy. I can simply switch to AC volts. We'll take the red lead and instead of hooking to the battery, I'm going to go to the back of the alternator. If I hook up to the battery, the battery acts sort of like a shock absorber and will absorb a lot of that AC. Now what I'm going to do is start the engine then and record the measurement. I'm looking for anything less than 500 millivolts. If it's above 500 millivolts, that might indicate a problem in the alternator and it could cause problems in the powertrain control module. This YJ alligator clip is great when you're connecting up to the battery cable or to some exposed connections. But the connection on the back of the alternator is tucked down in between the back of the alternator and some air conditioning lines which have steel on them. So I have to be real careful when I'm connecting up to them. I have just the probe for that. It's a wide jaw maxi grabber clip. It's fully flexible and well insulated. So once I make the connection and lay it down, I'm not worried about grounding out the probe. That can be just disastrous in this case. Simply unplug the old one. Plug on the new one. Make a good connection and we're ready to test. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and, en and engage the min-max function. Now we're recording. Part of this test is turning on the headlights so we'll load down the charging system and I'm going to increase the throttle. By pushing the min-max button again, I can read my maximum value of 91 millivolts. That's pretty good. Well below the 500 millivolts that typically would cause a problem.